Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk lightweight division. Today is Saturday, June the 12th, 2021. Let's talk about Vasyl Lomachenko's upcoming fight against Masayoshi Nakatani. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let's just say it, right? Sports has a lot of intrigue. The powers that be aren't always true to you. Don't always provide accurate information. We're finding out now that Tom Brady had a bad knee at times last year. Who knows, really, watching the NBA playoffs, whether or when James Harden is going to play, right? Is it a bad hamstring injury or is it hamstring tightness that's episodic? Are they holding him out for health reasons? Are they holding him out for strategic purposes? Well, I'm going to argue here that boxing's no different. They hide injuries from you all the time. Right? I once spoke with the lawyer for a boxer, famous boxer, and he told me, look, you know, my guy has an ongoing condition. Right? So, you know, we're looking at that before his next fight. This was years ago. This was when I was a youngster. Right? The bottom line is casual fans like me and you really don't know exactly what the physical health is for a fighter right after the Manny Pacquiao Floyd Mayweather fight we started hearing that Pacquiao entered the fight with a bum shoulder they didn't exactly highlight that in the pre-fight preparation did they right they wanted you to believe that the fighters were a hundred percent healthy right we'll overlook the fact that both fighters had situations we'll call it uh, hands or shoulder uh, because of course this is a tough combat sport and in sparring a lot of these guys have nagging injuries it's very rare in my opinion that a fighter enters the ring at a hundred percent so let's look at 33 year old Vasyl Lomachenko right he's 5'7 33 old 435 pounds Right? I believe different weight classes have different expiration dates. As I've said before here, in my opinion, without any scientific proof whatsoever, heavyweights age more slowly than everyone else. So you have guys in their 40s at heavy, Luis Ortiz comes to mind, who are still viable. You've had heavyweight champs in history who... Their age is still a bit of a mystery, even to historians. Sonny Liston, pick up. Right? Some people believe Sonny was 10 years older than advertised. Since Sonny couldn't read, we're not quite sure. Right? Well, let's look at Lomachenko closely, because I believe there are a few facts here that you need to know of, especially since you're getting better than 7 to 1 odds. Better than a plus 700 on his opponent, Masayoshi Nakatani. The bet I'm recommending here before I get into it is that you take Nakatoni, Nakatani to win the fight, right? It's an odds play. You're getting better than a plus 700. By the way, a few days ago, you were, you were getting better than a plus 740. As I make this video, the most recent odds I saw is a plus 711. Right? Take 32 year old Nakatani. He's not that much younger than Lomachenko. Simply to win the fight, you're getting the odds. Hedged with the over. Let's talk about why. Lomachenko is coming off shoulder surgery with a badly bruised rotator cuff. Badly bruised. 
Understand, folks, there was a chipped piece of cartilage in his shoulder. Now, he's ambidextrous. This was his right shoulder. But what you need to know is that he had surgery on the same shoulder in 2018. The same shoulder. So this is one of those chronic injuries at a minimum. This is one of those multi-surgery injuries. Now the promoter is not running around telling you about it, right? This is a bravado sport. This is a machismo sport. Lomachenko is not going to be going around saying, yeah, man, I've been injured. Yeah, you know, I've had problems, multi-surgery problems with my right shoulder, right? That's not the sport's identity. The sports identity is that, you know, the fighter could be shot, right? The fighter could have been in a car crash. And I'm just telling you, some old school guys are not going to blame the prior injury. They're not even going to mention the prior injury. Guys like Harry Grant are going to have to die for the coroner to figure out that he was blind in one eye. Joe Fraser is going to have to retire before he himself tells you he was blind in one eye for some of the biggest fights in his, of his career. So understand the culture, and the culture matters. You have guys like Larry Holmes going into a fight wearing a contact lens because his vision's so bad. And somehow he has a boxing license. Think about this. And you're only hearing about the contact lens after the fight has happened. Did you know that Jack Kent Cook, the owner of the Los Angeles Lakers, wanted to have Ali Fraser won at his newly built Fabulous Forum. But they suspected that Joe Fraser might not be cleared to fight in California. Folks, Fraser at the time was the heavyweight champ. So apparently there was some friend in New York City, a doctor, who apparently Fraser used to pass his physical. So that fight happened. The reason it's significant is, of course, Ali and Fraser fought two more times. Right? By the way, Jack Ken Cook, of course, still made a mint. This is what multimillionaires do, right, with the closed circuit rights for that first fight. Well, here you have Lomachenko, folks. We assume he's 100% healthy. We don't know it. He's old for 135 pounds. It's my belief that a fighter coming off surgery who's in his 30s, who's not a KO puncher, who's coming off a loss, who, in one of the last fights he won, got dropped by Jorge Linares. Dropped. Right? It's, it's my opinion that that fighter should not be going off at the odds that Vasyl Lomachenko is going off at. Against the fighter, Nakatani, who is not only one of the hardest punchers at 135, is not only the man who, in my opinion, and I advise everyone here to watch the fight. Don't look at the scorecards after the fight. Because boxing is a bit of a celebrity sport. Right? Judges love to vote for the celebrity, don't they? In my opinion, it's this man, Nakatani, who gave Teofimo Lopez his toughest fight to date. You've seen the highlights of Teofimo stopping guys. Understand, Nakatani went the distance with them. In my opinion, Nakatani looked better against Lopez, landed the more meaningful shots than Lomachenko, who tried to play stay away for the first half of the fight. Isn't the problem with the Lomachenko-Lopez fight the fact that Lomachenko doesn't start fighting until he's several rounds behind? 
Nakatani, folks, is trying to fight early. Nakatani lands a lot of hard shots. Well, let's dig deeper. There's a fighter who's on my sleeper list, and look, I'm the first to say that if this guy is guilty of what he's been charged with, he's been charged with murder, folks, then he needs to be held responsible. I'm not here in any way, shape, or form to forgive any criminal activity that a fighter has done. But what I want people to do is to go back and look at the career of Felix Verdejo. Right? Look at that career. In my opinion, and I understand, he lost multiple times. But in my opinion, this was one of the most skilled fighters at 135 pounds. I thought Verdejo was underrated. Verdejo against Lomachenko, in my opinion, would have been a spectacular fight. Master boxer. But understand boxing. If you have a weakness, and in Verdejo's case, it was his chin. From time to time, that weakness is going to betray you. Right? The same, by the way, in my opinion, could be said about Roy Jones Jr., Right, there's a story going around of Ray Leonard at the time thinking of sponsoring some amateur fighters. And according to reports, he was looking at Roy Jones sparring and Roy Jones got knocked down. And that's the reason why, and who knows if the story's true, tell us about it in the comment section. That's the reason why Ray Leonard chose not to sponsor Roy Jones Jr. Right, a fighter can have a chin problem. Right, Vladimir Klitschko. And can be a superstar as long as he doesn't get hit flush. Understand in Klitschko's case, there's a fight against Sam Peter where he hits the canvas twice. How many times did he hit the canvas with Corey Sanders? You saw him hit the canvas with Lehman Brewster. I haven't gotten to the fight where he hits the canvas against Anthony Joshua. Right? Well, Let's also say this too. Go back in history. Sonny Banks drops Ali. Henry Cooper drops Ali, and I would argue it's a creative corner. Angelo Dundee, who knows how to have tape become loose, that buys Ali extra time to get back in that fight. Of course, Ali gets dropped by Joe Fraser the first time they fought. Right? Later, Ali, who's less mobile, is able to take punishment, which may have contributed to his Parkinson's. Well, let's just say, Felix Verdejo was beating Nakatani. But Nakatani, as I said, is a hard puncher. More importantly, Nakatani's 5'11". By the way, he's four inches taller than Lomachenko. Four inches taller. And just to understand, Against Verdejo, a guy who, in my opinion, had the possibility of being great. Look up his history. Nakatani gets dropped. He was the underdog in that fight. He gets dropped. Gets off the canvas. KOs Verdejo in round nine. Now, let me say there were a lot of guys with resumes at 135. In my opinion, any guy who has fought for Dejo and Teofimo Lopez has fought some of the very best in the division. Both guys, master boxers. Both guys, excellent counterpunchers. Both guys hit with power. So you're dealing with a guy, Nakatani who's fought great fighters already, in my opinion, highly skilled fighters, right? I'll concede, Verdejo doesn't have the career accomplishments, doesn't have the belts on his record, where you would say, oh, this is the guy who, you know, is dominating the era. I'll also concede Teofimo Lopez is still a young guy. 
He doesn't have these six or seven title defenses that you can point to where you say, oh, he owned the division. We're not going to confuse him here with Marvin Hagler. Maybe he gets there, but there's work to do, right? He's not exactly Bernard Hopkins or Carlos Monzon right now, right? But in terms of talent, in terms of skill level, Nakatani has been in the ring with some excellent fighters and understand how it turned out. He goes the distance with Teofimo Lopez, just like Lomachenko did. He goes the distance with Teofimo Lopez. He's not there trying to win a decision, folks. There are times in that fight where he's trying to KO Teofimo. He's a tall guy, he's an awkward guy, and let me say it's awkward guys who throw off precision fighters. He's an awkward guy who's throwing punches with a loop on them. So Teofimo had a problem. Teofimo would see him throwing the right hand, Teofimo would have a hand up to block it, and then the punch would loop and hit him places he wasn't expecting. Again, don't believe the judges' scorecards. This is the YouTube era. You can look at films. Look at at least the highlights of Nakatani against Teofimo Lopez. Also, I know Lomachenko went through a period of his career where he was Nomachenko, right? Where fighters, Nicholas Walters, for example, were fighting him and he was too elusive, he was too clever, and opponents said, that's it, I'm out of here. I'm not going to get embarrassed on the scorecards. That's not Nakatani. As I said before, Nakatani got knocked down by Felix Verdejo. Knocked down. Hangs in there. Right? This is the slugger who has no shame. This is the slugger who understands, you know, if I drop this guy for 10 seconds... The judges' scorecards don't matter. This is the slugger looking to be right once against the fighter who was knocked down by Jorge Linares. Against the fighter who's coming back from a second shoulder surgery on the same shoulder. This is a slugger and power's the last to go against the guy who's a volume guy relying on virtuoso technique, not power. So, in my opinion, the puncher here has a chance. If I just told you in the abstract that a guy at 135 fought Verdejo and fought Lopez, KO'd Verdejo and went the distance with Lopez. You'd say, wow, that, that's an interesting dude. Then I tell you he's fighting a guy coming off surgery, coming off a loss, who's older than him, who doesn't have his punch. I think a lot of gamblers would say, whoa, wait a moment, what odds am I getting on that fight? Three to one, four to one? When you're up in the seven to one category, when the casino is telling you that any lightweight on the planet, if they fought Nakatani eight times, would win seven of the eight. In my opinion, you would intuitively know this fight is mispriced. I like the underdog. I'll hedge it with the over. Understand what that means. Right? It means if Lomachenko comes out and gives a virtuoso performance, but doesn't get the KO. Or doesn't get a KO until the ending of the fight. The very later rounds. The hedge will hold. Understand if Nakatani comes out and lands some big shots on Lomachenko and wins the fight by stoppage or by decision. Understand the way punchers 
get decisions. It's the Deontay Wilder way against Tyson Fury. That was a draw, but understand, Wilder's dominated in that fight. But when you're the puncher and you drop the guy in multiple rounds, sometimes the scorecards even out. Shouldn't have happened in the Wilder Fury one fight, but it did. Right? Nakatani is the guy who stopped Felix Verdejo. Nakatani is the harder puncher in this fight. He's the much bigger man in this fight. Because he's so much bigger, because he throws looping shots, he has ring coverage. Right, so here, it's an odds play. I'm not saying Nakatani is better than Lomachenko. I'm not saying if this was an even money fight, I would take Nakatani. But I live in the real world, and I know he should not be going off at a 7-1 to underdog. I live in the real world, and I know the Lomachenko health situation hasn't been as clearly understood by the public as it should be. I'm also in the real world, and I know you get into your 30s at 135. And you don't have a major punch. Right? You're in trouble. Right? You shouldn't be the big favorite that you are. Lomachenko is priced as if he's healthy and in his mid-twenties. Fighting a guy who hasn't already fought some of the best in the division. So I'm rolling the dice here. I like the underdog, the 7-1 to one underdog. Nakatani to win the fight, I'm going to hedge the fight with the over. But let's understand the risk involved. If Lomachenko comes out and is very aggressive and treats Nakatani like he treated, I believe it was Anthony Kralla, is in his face, is not giving him an opportunity to extend his arms, is landing hard, short shots inside of Nakatani's reach. And let's face it too, Nakatani has that slugger's defense. He's accustomed to doing unto others, not having anything come back. If Nakatani's unable to defensively protect himself and Loma gets an early KO, you lose it all. That's the risk I'm willing to take. I like the underdog. My daughter's here in the background, excited. I like the underdog to win the fight at a plus 711, hedged with the over. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.